I've got the production model in motion V12, and let me tell you 20 things that I love and hate about this wheel. First off, the materials. This thing is durable. We took it to the bike park, and this thing crashed. This thing was ridden hard. Yeah! Nothing but just a few small abrasions. Let me show you. Just some scuff marks right there. I mean, this thing took a pretty tough tumble and you can see just some dust and a few scratches. This rubber bumper here really did the trick. Impact was here in the corners and this bumper took the brunt of the impact. And since it's rubber, it absorbed it everything else was pretty much left unscathed. Good quality, durable material. Let's continue and we'll talk about the other 19 things that I love and hate about this wheel. Next up has gotta be ride quality. This thing just feels smooth, nimble, and that's what you expect from a 16 inch wheel to be nice and nimble. Super easy to control. Which brings us to the next point, is the interactive display. The fact that you can adjust and customize and find out so much information on this display, it's fantastic. The display is big, it's interactive, it's touch. I love it. All right, let's keep on going. This next thing I love about this wheel is gonna be a little bit controversial. Some people are gonna love it, some people hate it and that is the sound wave. Let me show you what sound wave is. Another thing I love about this is the kickstand. It's an improvement upon the V11 kickstand, which was pretty innovative. Same kickstand, only better. It's super solid. Whereas with the V11, it felt like with a blow of the wind or if someone brushed up against the wheel that it could fall over. This, pretty robust for a kickstand. A lot of other UCs, I think basically all of them, have fans to keep the internal components cool. The InMotion V12 does not. It uses a heat sink, and because of that, it's super quiet. If you guys watch the video where we uh, look at the Gotway Monster Pro, the fan is so loud. There are times in that video when we were recording it, I had to turn off the EUC just so I could hear myself speak. But in this case, super silent. Another pro with that is it's just less things to break. When you have these fans running in there, if they break, you're going to have to replace them because that's the only way the EUC can keep itself cool and keep itself from overheating. The other thing I like about this wheel, because of the adjustable pedal hangers, being able to raise or lower the pedal height, you can adjust it to how you like it. I like it high because I like to ride in stuff like off-road terrain that might require me to be a little bit higher off the ground. The other nice thing too is, when you have it high like this, it's a lot harder to pedal scrape on these tight turns. I'm sure someone more talented than I can do it, but for me, I can't scrape it. I like it high so I can take tight turns and not have to worry about pedal scraping. But if you're a newer rider and you don't want to be so high off the ground, then feel free to lower them. Pretty sweet. There's the pedal hanger and there are the different levels. Let's keep riding. For a non-Gotway wheel, this is a powerful, powerful wheel. 2,500 watt motor, it has a 16 inch wheel. Put those two together and you have a, enough torque to do what you wanna do. If you put some power pads on it, it completely changes how this thing rides. Mike Leahy, the high flyer stunt EUC rider, when he first rode this, he wasn't very impressed. But after he put on some power pads on it, he had a great time jumping this at the bike park. I've never felt lacking for power on this EUC, that's me. Mike was impressed. Seth Johnson, another stunt rider, really liked it. This thing has plenty of power to do what you need to do.
Another thing that I like about this wheel is just the way that it looks. Let me show you. The InMotion V12 initial release photos that were kind of leaked were not super flattering. Maybe it was because the people taking the photos just don't know how to get the right angle, but this is a good looking wheel. From the bumper to this vent grill, it doesn't look toyish like some of the other EUCs can look. It doesn't have a, the looks of like an S18, but it can hold its own. It's a good looking electric unicycle. We'll use this pond here in the background to talk about the next thing that I like about this wheel, and that is it's got an IPX certification, IPX5 for the body, IPX6 for the wheel. This is great for a commuter wheel because if you're commuting, you can't dictate what the weather is going to be like, so the roads might be a little wet, and knowing that this has IPX certification for water resistance gives me a little bit of peace of mind. All right, let's keep riding. The headlights on this wheel, I would say, are above average. They're bright enough, they're brighter than most of the wheels on the market, but definitely not as bright as the V11s, which was the brightest headlight and probably still is the brightest headlight in the game. These lights are adjustable. With a simple tap of the button, the lights work well. I like them. All right, let's talk stopping power. That's something I don't like about this wheel. For a 16 inch wheel, you expect more torque, more stopping power. In this case, it's kind of sluggish, especially when compared to my daily rider, which is my Nikola. I'm going to ride here up until that backpack going pretty fast. I'm going to try to brake hard, emergency brake. And let's see how long it takes me to stop. I'm going to go fairly fast. I don't have power pads, so I can't muscle this too much. And then I'm going to stop right at that bag. Whoa. I don't know if you saw that. I tried to brake hard. Brake hard is if I were riding my Nikola, but I nearly fell off the back. So I'm used to being able to just tilt back and really put my weight into it and stop. In this case, I need, you know, I, I gave myself about 10 feet and I needed more. Hopefully this is something that they can update in a, a future firmware. Let's try that again. So if you have the emergency brake, stop! Ah, still couldn't stop. Getting better. Yeah, you definitely have to prepare for that more gradual stop. If you're coming from a bigger wheel, it feels like I'm riding a big wheel when I'm trying to stop. When I'm accelerating, it feels like I'm riding a small nimble wheel, agile wheel. When I'm trying to stop hard, it feels like I'm riding something like the Gotway Monster Pro, a huge monster that's just taken its time to stop. You can sit back, you can lean back into it. It's just not as hard as on other 16 inch wheels that I've ridden. And I don't know if that's to protect the battery. Mm. Definitely getting better at it. I'm feeling more comfortable. As you practice and as you get used to the wheel, it's going to get easier. My stopping distance has progressively gotten shorter and I feel like I'm getting some decent stopping power. So the stopping power is decent, not terrible, but it's not great. The other thing I don't like about this wheel is the touch display. While it is fantastic for adjusting your settings and it's great for being able to see the information you need while on the fly, the problem is in direct sunlight, it's kind of tough to see what's going on. It's a bright sunny day. I mean, it's not terrible. You can still kind of see what's going on. You can see the speed, which is good because it's big enough font, but it's uh, and when you're looking at the fine print, in direct sunlight, it's really tough to see. The other thing about this wheel, it's light and agile when you're riding it. But for a 16 inch wheel, this has gotta be one of the heavier 16 inch wheels at 64 pounds. Definitely heavier than my Nikola, which limits the portability. But I can understand why it's heavier because this is the biggest motor and the biggest battery ever put into an in-motion wheel. So I'll give them a break there, but portability is slightly limited just because of its 60 some pound weight. In my opinion, 60 pounds is kind of the borderline cutoff for what I call portable. Well, it depends on who you are. 60 some pounds, 
for someone like La Laxinum, that's nothing. For someone like Jimmy Chang, that's backbreaking weight. Getting better at that stopping. Stopping right in front of the camera. Another thing that I don't like about this wheel is the trolley handle, while it is rugged and it does feel sturdy forward and backward, it's really hard to one hand. On my Nikola, I could just one hand it. On a lot of the other wheels, you just, with one hand, you can push the mechanism to unlock the trolley handle and use it. In this case, the mechanism to unlock it is here up in the front, but to where you hold it is here in the back. And so it's kind of, it's awkward. You can do it. It takes practice and I've been practicing and that's why I'm making it look so smooth. Some guys are good at going downstairs. Some guys are good at doing high flying jumps. I'm good at operating this trolley handle with one hand. Uh, almost. I'm pretty good. Way easier with two hands. All right, here's a pro and a con. The speakers are loud, crisp, clear. Probably some of the best speakers on an electric unicycle today. But there's one problem that the engineers didn't think about. All right, and let me show you. While you're riding with sound wave on, sound wave, remember, is that sound that the speakers emit as you're riding. If you're trying to play music at the same time, the sound wave will take precedence over your music, at least for me when I'm playing my Spotify or, or YouTube or whatever sound, and it actually lowers the volume on you, the music that you're trying to play. If I'm just going at a nice steady pace and there's no sound wave, you can hear the music fine, just like this, right? But check out when I start accelerating and sound wave starts going on, it'll lower the sound of my music. The fix is pretty easy. You just turn off sound wave and you're fine. Now my, I can play my music as loud as I want. The problem is I just can't use the sound wave feature. The fact that sound wave kind of lowers the volume on the music that you're trying to play when you're riding, I think that's just an oversight and they'll probably be able to fix it with an app update. Just something that I've noticed because I do enjoy sound wave, I do enjoy listening to music, but you can't do both. Oh well, hopefully they fix that. That's my list of the things that I love and hate about the InMotion V12. It's an evolving list and an evolving review, so make sure to check out my written website, which I will keep updated at eucguide.com. This wheel is a great all-purpose wheel. The most important thing to me is it feels quality, it feels safe, and because of that, I think that makes this a wheel that I can keep in my house, charge at night, letting my friends and family ride. Thanks for watching, and remember, when you ride, wear your safety gear.